Right, we wanted to get the view from New York. Regular viewers are going to know James Kennedy from Rugby United New York. Equally, people are going to know the name Johnny Kennedy from regular messages to the show and uh, the purveyor of this fine piece of art, which I've temporarily <laughs> plundered from the office. Um, James, I'm going to start with you. The rugby season obviously was blown up and um, has, has been annulled from a Rugby United perspective. What has this whole experience been like? Uh, listen, it, it, it's... It's frustrating. Um, I feel really bad for the players. Um, you know, likes of Matthew, Matthew and Marshy, who won't be coming back next year. And they were just starting to find form. The, the last game against San Diego, they were really starting to click. Um, um, so I feel really bad for them. But then, you know, in the context of what's going on, my problems are very much first world problems, right? So we have 328 days to our next league game. So that's 328 days to, to work on onboarding my new CEO, finding a commercial person, all the stuff that you and me, Jared, have talked about in the past that's, that's now moving forward. Um, you know, we were lucky. We were about to put a big lease on an office so we could pull off that because we don't need an office right now. Um, so, yeah, there's so much we can do in the downturn. I just feel really bad for the players, um, you know, th those guys that are moving on. And, and you know, um, like Matthew is still here. Um, he's, he's like, what can I do to help? I he feels really bad, you know. So that's the part that's, that's disappointing. Um, what's yeah. life like in what's life actually like in New York at the moment? Then it, it's it's quiet. Um, you know, I, I went around on a motorcycle yesterday. I'll be going around again today because we do have some work going on. Um, limited on the construction side. Um, um, it's it's very quiet. It's 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 eerie. I mean, Johnny will tell you. You know, even if Johnny couldn't could be open all his clients are not going into the city so it doesn't because there's no one there the buildings are empty you know um i was in a building yesterday it's regular occupancy is 2400 there was 20 people in the building you know so um people are shutting down rightly so um staying isolated um so yeah it's it's weird and it's like everybody like the guys in art like you guys it's it gets a bit frustrating being at home all the time right johnny it's, it's a bit like the walls start to close in a little bit right oh my God. So, um, and then developing new routines and new habits. So, yeah. Johnny, you're a public and you on the long haul in, in New York City, a, a, a popular haunt amongst um, Irish people. A lot of people are going to know it who are listening and watching to us. What, what has your experience been? How quickly did they move from, oh, this is grand, this is going to be fine, it's just a flu, to, oh, shit, let's lock everything down? Yeah, on bar terms for us, it was pretty scary because we were actually on the verge of opening another spot on the Monday. Um, and I mean, up to Sunday night, I was like, yeah, we're going to open, we're going to open. And, uh, like I even had a young kid out from Athlone working for us and he literally came over two weeks before, but, um, I literally thought up to the night before, yeah, we're going to open, we're going to open. And, uh, it literally went that quick that that was Sunday evening. And then by Monday morning, like, cause Connor's actually involved with us, Connor Murray, and he was ringing me going, he's going to open, he's going to open. And then it just went like that. And I mean, we were boarding up the doors the next day. Like, that is scary. It looked like a hurricane, like Katrina thing had kind of come in. All the bars putting boards up. I seen it in the palace in Dublin. It's just ridiculous. Like, I, I can't really... It's, it, I think the biggest effect is going to be when we open. Everyone thinks, oh, you get open in a couple of weeks, it's going to be fine. It, 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 after that, their staff are gone. They really are. Like, I didn't think that happened. There's people going back to Ireland, have moved home. They've gone back. There's people in self-quarantine. Like, they've gone home rather than sit in self-quarantine for, what is it, um, two weeks, rather than stay here and fight out. Yeah, and I don't blame them. I'm sure, there's the uncertainty. They don't know what's coming. Some of them might be documented, you know? I think, Johnny, that's the difference between uh, what you have to go through because your cash flow is gone. And mm -hmm. on the construction side, we're, we guaranteed incomes for everybody, at least for the next three months. And on the rugby side, we're paying out the players all their contracts probably next week. Even the hourly players are getting their contracts as if they played through June. But it's a different cash model, right? So, mm. you know, as I said, you need that. You need those tilts ringing every night. So Yeah. And that. then you have the, yeah, also have the problem probably on your end as well, James, like where you're going to see, you know, are people going to pay their bills, you know, in, in the contracting end? You know, that's where users are going to be. Like, I think the, the long-term effect of this in the months to come down the road when you're chasing up bills and when you're stuff like that. And for us, mm. Where's the tourists going to be? Is there any tourists going to be in town? Highly unlikely. Corporate America, they're not going to be spending money. So the bar trade will suffer. Like, so landlords are going to, are looking for money. 
they're going to look for money. Eventually, they'll freeze it. They'll freeze for the first two or three months, but eventually, they're going to be, they're going to want their money straight away, but you're not going to have the customers straight away. So, like, I know they did this stimulus package today of $2 trillion, but, like, where is that going to trickle down to the landlord, to the tenant, to the bartender, to the customer? It's yeah. going to be tough, you know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I think New York would be the best place to be as regards people coming back and customers will be amazing. But that will only get you so far. I think it'll be the effects of this will be in the three and four or six months down the road. I think you'll see a lot of bars closing. You know, already there's bars closed. I know of two bars that they just walked away. You know, what I, mean? a, I can't recall. There's a uh, it's not the Peninsula, but one of the bigger hotels went bankrupt uh, just last week. It closed closed down for good. Yeah, um, it's just it's scary times for staff and for people like that. Like you know, when they're all leaving the country already, you know, that's their first option, and I don't blame them. You know, but I personally, I wouldn't rather be anywhere else. And this is my home anyway. It's not like, you know, people say, would you go home? Like, well, I am home. I'm not going my brothers across the hall. Me and my wife are here. It ain't, it ain't going to change. We're not. I'm not going anywhere. I mean, the, the other side of that is we still have players here like Matthew. We have two Irish guys still here. And their attitude was, well, they want to stay and help. But it's like, if I go to Paris, if I go to London, if I go to Dublin, I'm still locked down. So what's the difference, you know, really at the end of the day? So, um yeah, it's it's interesting. And you know, just on the revenue, you know, we're pretty much writing off um, seventy percent of our sponsorship income, which is a lot of income for us uh, because we know we just won't be able to collect it. I mean, we've only played four games. You know, they're not going to get the activation. Uh, Force majeure cancels contracts like Act of God, right? So there is revenue hits to, to to us as well, massive revenue hits. But it is what it is. I always think compared to those bar workers, those bus buys, those week to week. Uh, earners who are all out of work right now and home with their kids in New York, you know, my problems are not big problems, you know, um, I mean, that's, that's, that's the, what is it, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands possibly in New York City, you know, so, mm. um, and in, I'm sure in Dublin and in all over the world, right? So. Oh, yeah, I think um, there was a, a couple of days last week, 150,000 jobs went across Ireland and <clears throat> tens of thousands more yesterday when they closed all the fast food outlets and, and everything else so and again no real indication of exactly when this is going to finish um the construction side of things james a lot of irish people obviously over in new york it has been boom time for construction in america it certainly it seemed that way from an irish perspective that there were uh, guys heading over and, and getting jobs so are, are they all coming home straight home or are, are they going to stick it out for a little while and see what happens what do you think is going to happen there I, I think i've talked to a couple of my um uh, contemporaries, uh, like you know, um, and it's so hard to get staff. In, 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 in <clears throat> most people are getting paid as long as the cash is there. Uh, most people, you know, the first thing that happened when this shut down was building owners reached out and said, "Our buildings are empty. Let's do all these projects." But then, you know, we had construction workers getting the virus, so it was like, "Okay, we have to shut down." But then it's like go back in on a smaller footprint because keep things going, keep certain guys working. So I, I think what will happen is the majority, especially of companies, say of a million dollars in revenue and over will keep their staff as long as they can um, because it's so hard to find staff, good staff. <clears throat> and I, I bet you Johnny would say, I wish, you know, with bar staff, for example, you wish you could do the same thing, right? Because it's even in every industry in New York, you know, we're leaving a, a situation where there was 100% employment, but now we're going to 30% unemployment, but it will ramp up, you know, it, it will come back in some form. I mean, you, you won't have to look for all those staff again because that costs a lot of money. <clears throat> right, Johnny? Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, so that's it. You know, um, I think, I mean, what's going on just on sports, Jer? What's, what's going on with the European leagues? Has, has uh, Pro 14 done anything yet or did they intend to try play on? It's, it's unclear just yet exactly what's going to happen. It, um, the European competition, they're going to finish that at some point. The, the um, Premiership have said that they're going to play on into June and July if they need to and that their intention is to finish this season and have next season start late and be truncated. They seem to have been a bit out of step with um, with everybody else. So I, I would expect that um, if there is a an agreement in place, then you might get an end to a season. It, 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 um, Pro 14 is suspended at the moment, and I'm not sure anybody thinks that it is going to come back. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know what the story is with the, the LNR. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know either. I haven't talked to anybody in France in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so 
James, is, is, is there a situation because of the fact that rugby and your league in, in the United States is sort of in its infancy and a lot of teams are in their infancy, is there a real threat to the future of a few of, of the clubs involved? No, no, there, there isn't at all because, um, you know, um, a lot of investors have come in in the last six months alone. You know, the, the teams that were struggling, like Austin, have, uh, have, they're backed by billionaires now. Um, I myself am backed by a big group out of New Zealand. So the league had stabilized a lot in the last six to 12 months. So there, there's no concern there, you know. I mean, there's always those rumors, you know, but we, you know, we got two visas through last week. You know, we got Evan Minter out of, out of Cork and Drew Mitchell out of Australia. Now, Drew's going to be a year older, so we'll see how that goes. Because they, they were meant for this season, right? So and we expect other visas to come through in the next, in the next month. Um, you know, we're still cracking on with building our stadium and all that kind of stuff. So... There, there is no concern there, um, but you're right. There is perception because it is a new league, but maybe a year ago there might have been concerns because the, the pockets weren't deep enough, but now the pockets are plenty deep. So, And everybody's looking at this as an opportunity to, you know, we have a new commissioner. He's been here for four months, but now he can really exert his influence because he comes from the NBA. You know, I had just hired a CEO, so terrible thing to say, but now he has time to onboard. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're seeing this kind of across the league, you know, getting best, best standards, better standards, better best practices. And um, we're trying to keep current by launching a virtual league. And there's a lot of kinks to work out there, but it's, it's just, it's about keeping the brand out there, right? Keep, keeping people aware. Um, you know, we're doing town halls with local, the local rugby community and uh, talking to college players about recruitment for next year, talking to overseas players, um, et cetera. So we're working as much as it, now as we were three weeks ago. What's the virtual um, league? Uh, so it's, it's Robbie 20, Robbie 20. It's the PlayStation. Well, I think it's PlayStation Xbox, but the PlayStation version. So we couldn't get uh, the maker to, to, to turn out an MLR team specific in time. So we had a draft and we assigned national teams. And then our champion, like we played, shit, who did we play last week? We played New Orleans and it was 12 all, but it wasn't really about the game. It was about, so we have a player playing and a player beside him. In our case, we had the mascot beside him just taking the piss out of the other players. You know, so it's about the banter. It's about keeping the league going in some form. You know, it's about taking the piss. Um, you know, we have uh, Alex Corbacero, I think this week, doing a, doing a preview show and really seriously deadpan. You know, so we've got rugby journalists now starting to write reports on it. You know, so it's just, it's just a bit of fun. People are stuck in their houses. So trying to get a, keep a bit of banter going. Um, and it's a good way to get to know some of the players as well. So, yeah. And is it, is it, no, and is it good? It's, it's not really good. I mean, rugby video games aren't the most exciting to watch anyway, but it's, <laughs> it's not necessarily about that, right? I mean, yeah. so, um, you know, I think um, NASCAR has now done the same thing. NBA is talking about doing the same thing. So hopefully it doesn't get so good that people are like, ah, we just want virtual. We won't go back to the real thing like that. But I, I don't think that's going to happen with rugby because once again, the, the game, I don't want to get in trouble for this, but the gameplay isn't, isn't that exciting. So, you know. It's, um, it's possibly a hard question to answer, lads, but when you walk outside the house and you get your bit of fresh air every day and you're chatting to New Yorkers, like, what's the tone like? I think in Ireland there's been, I guess, there's been scenes from like parks, I'm sure you've seen them yourself, and beaches, and perhaps like some, sometimes the full uh, directors haven't been fully appreciated. Are people behaving themselves in New York? It's, it's obviously a city that's had its hardship in the very recent past, and uh, people have had to put up with uh, a lot at post 9 11 in New York. Are people prepared for this? Or are they going to, uh, to, to play ball when it comes to all the directives coming from the very top? I think Long Island have had a big spike in the last day or two now because uh, a lot of people headed to Long Island. Right. Even if, even at first, like, because as I said there too, is the way it came on so quick. I was even looking at going north at first. I was like, oh, this would be a good time to go to Newport and blah, blah. And then you just start thinking about it. So the big spike in numbers in Long Island and all these places and Jersey Shore now have started complaining about people coming down. Same thing. Uh, I think Florida have literally ordered a quarantine and anyone that flies from north, anyone that comes from New York that lands in Florida, they have to go into two, two weeks isolation. So that's just a proof that people were, I'm not saying weren't taking it serious, but we're like going, okay, let's get out of town. We'll go closer to the beaches and go stuff like that. As regards being out around New York, I haven't actually been out that much purposely. You know, I've actually took it a bit serious after my first initial thoughts. So I haven't left. I've been outside the apartment. What day is today? Even Tuesday. 
So St. Patrick's Day was this time last week. I've been out once since in a week. So I don't really know what's going on around New York. Only what I see on TV, which is probably right. similar to what you see, you know. I mean, Wednesday I, here, Johnny. Sorry? <laughs> it's Wednesday here. We're recording this. It's going oh, out okay. Thursday morning. Yeah, right. yeah, brilliant. That's good. Oh, so it's Wednesday. There you go. Uh, on my that. end, on my end, well, there's two things there. I've completely, I've completely lost track of the days, um, because yeah. every day we're kind of, kind of not working. There's no sports to mark the weekend, so mm. I do have to constantly check. Okay, what day is it? You know, because every day, like that song, every day is exactly the same. You know, um, I, I have a dog, so I'm out, I'm out twice or three times a day, and I have a motorcycle, so I take that around. And um, I was out at nine o'clock this morning. I live in Long Island City. It's a very densely populated area of the city. And there was nobody out. It was the first time I really saw, you know, rush hour, uh, whatever, whatever day it is. I just, once again, I, is it Wednesday or Thursday? Um, and there was nobody out. Uh, and it was just like you were walking the dog at five o'clock in the morning. So that's the first time I really experienced it. I, I walked the dog last night and there was people out because, you know, a lot of these pe the people live in small apartments. They have to get some air, you know. Mm. Um, I was in the city yesterday um, on a job, but I drove around a bit. It, it's it's not abandoned like some of the news shows are showing and I don't know where they get those pictures from because I couldn't find any empty streets but it's very very it's a very quiet Sunday if, if that makes sense Johnny that makes sense to you right yeah that's yeah I was out last week and that's what it kind of felt like I'd actually a customer called me last night I think it was a very interesting that customer you think that they're worried about certain things and he texted me to see how he was concerned for me and all and then he asked me is there any chance you could pick up a keg of Guinness <laughs> and it was dead serious, like, and uh, I'm actually considering it. I'm actually going to think about getting it for him today. But he was real, like, he opened up, I hope you're okay, your family are well. Listen, you know, my love for the Guinness is there any chance I could get a keg today. So I actually might venture into the city today at some point, just because he's probably hanging outside the bar, you know. This is Johnny, if Johnny, you've given out cakes, man, you know. Yeah, I was I'll, afraid to I'll, say that to you, actually, yeah. I'll strap one to the back of my motorcycle, no problem. Yeah, I'm sure you do deliveries. <laughs> well, here, look, any port in a storm, as they say, if, uh, if delivering yeah. kegs of Guinness keeps the bars open. What's your, what is your situation, Johnny, with staff? Like, uh, uh, you know, are you going to yeah. be able to staff back up again when you open? When do you expect to be open again? Oh, man. Um, well, if you listen to Trump, we'll all be open for Easter Sunday, which is obviously, let's be honest. Um, I would say I'd be, I'd be very hopeful for May. I really would be very hopeful for early May, but to what to what extent will we be open? Are we going to just gradually open? Bars were the first thing to take the hit. We were the first things to tell them to close, and I agree with it. I can see why. Are we going to be the last thing to open? Probably. You know, that'll probably be the case. So in May, as regards staff, all of them are still in town. They're all still happy enough. They were well established, so they've done, you know, they hopefully they've saved well. They're entitled to welfare. Um. So I would hope for middle of May, and that's just for us personally. But even for me, my wife, my brothers across the hall, I mean, we're all in the industry. None of us have an income. That's just, it's done. And it is what it is. But like I say, the whole world is in the same boat. I'm not crying about it in that sense. I just want to get open. I'm just sick of it. I just want to be open. I wouldn't care if I was getting paid. I would say May. I don't know why I have that optimistic number in my head. But if you'd have told me last week that May was optimistic, I would have been like devastated. But... Now it's looking like it could be a realistic number for me, but I really don't know, Jerry. It could be any time. I mean, the, the yeah. other side of that, guys, is the schools are, are going to be closed right through the end of the school year. So, you know, you've got 1.1 million public school students, um, or city schools, and then I've got as well the 300,000 private schools. So those kids are at home. So even, you know, <clears> even if, you, if we do get our businesses open, you know, especially hospitality, there's, there's not going to be the same demand right away, Johnny, right? Because people are stuck at home, you know, yeah. with their kids, you know. So uh, is that the same in Ireland, guys? Or, I mean, all schools are closed now, right? So uh, people said... Yeah, they haven't, they haven't said that it's for the rest of the year, but a lot of people are operating on the basis that the kids won't be going back to mm -hmm. school and that if there is any kids going back to school, it'll be almost exclusively to do exams. So that'd be uh, junior cert and leaving cert and maybe not even junior cert. Like, that hasn't come through yet, but... No yeah. one can kind of see a, a pathway where we're on total. It's we're, they're not using the word lockdown, but uh, all public buildings are closed. Um, beaches and parks are still open, uh, but restaurants, bars, bookmakers, uh, cinemas, theaters—they're all gone. So um, and schools are gone. How do you realistically reopen the schools without everything else coming back on? And uh, I don't know if if, if they're saying it's a twelve-week. Uh, until you reach the peak, we kind of have already only done 
two weeks at this point. So we could be a full 10 weeks away yet before that peak has, has passed through and, and it reaches a level where they're happy enough with the amount of people who are going into hospital. Yeah. So um, I'd say it's uh, the great unknown is how long this is going to last and um, could be a long, empty summer of, of no sport for, for any of us to talk about. And it, that's the that's thing as well, you know, we need, we need sport. We need, like... To be honest with you, uh, I'm trying not to curse here, but like I've been turning my phone off at night because I'm sick of, sounds terrible, but I'm sick of hearing about it. You know, it's mm. on every channel all the time. You know, um, you've got every sort of opinion. And it's like, you know, I, you know, I went for a walk with someone yesterday. that I do not want to talk about this. Let's talk about something else. You know, so it would be lovely to get sport back on uh, in some capacity. I don't know how, because we, we just need it, in my, in my opinion. But you've got a co-host. <laughs> We do have a call. <laughs> How you doing? Can you give me two minutes? Can you give me two minutes? Can I just on a call at the minute? <laughs> yes, quick. You can, uh... Quickly, quickly. <laughs> I will be really quick. Yeah, all right. It's not you're always working. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but sport is the big it... thing for me too because the long haul is basically, we built the long haul on GAA. We, 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 that was our big thing. We pushed it from start to finish and it really paid off for us. The rugby came in hand with it. So with both of them, sports gone, even for me, is just detrimental. Like So the idea of no championship would be just devastating for us. As regards to trying to get back up and running, everybody will support you here. They're amazing like that. But it, if you don't have that product to sell to them, the effect that will have even for me and for around the world not having the, the GEA is massive. And the fear of that now coming back on this year is probably bigger than anything for us anyway. And right now, obviously, the league is looking like it's going to be scrapped or whatever they decide to do with the league. Now, whether the championship will go to a direct knockout, if that was the case and it did start up whenever, that actually could work out really well for us because I think as you were hitting on yesterday, the excitement of that, of having automatic knockout games as opposed to these, probably some of these Super 8 games that are kind of, not dead rubbers, but it's the next best thing to it. If you're getting the idea of a knockout that anyone could beat anybody would be amazing if we have about eight of them as opposed to what we had three of late. Every game's a final, right? Uh, going back to the olden times. Uh, what about what about something like, you know, getting cockfighting or something like that going, you know, <laughs> rat racing? I mean, is, is there... Uh, I'll have Peter call me after this, but I think I'm okay with that, you know? Um, and someone did ask Joe yesterday, was there any interest in them doing something about fishing? I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw a towel at it. The lads start talking about fishing. That's it. I'm out. <laughs> darts. Final straw. You, you have our permission to uh, pull the plug uh, if we ever start talking about darts as well. Uh, well, oh, look, yeah. lads. We we wish you the very best with um, both your businesses uh, and your sporting endeavours. Um, like we're definitely going to keep in touch with this because you know New York is a city that so many Irish people have a connection with and fully understand the trouble that you guys are going through. Um, and I think it's going to get pretty bad for you guys, uh, certainly in terms of the news over the next while. So if we can be any kind of distraction, then we'll happily uh, we're happily get on board with that. Uh, to the Kennedy yeah. boys, you're not related, right? You aren't. This isn't like some weird kind of thing that I've never established here that the, you two are yeah. somehow related. I'm sure we I'm probably are, right? We're related yeah. through the long haul. Yeah. <laughs> I, watched, I watched RT's documentary on the Kennedys last night. I don't know if we want to be related to them. 